Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and an extremely special guest, all the way from Long Island, New York. This dude got on a plane last night with his girl and flew to Orlando, Florida to be a guest. He is changing people's lives with his Facebook group. His parents named him Rocco Ligurcio. People affectionately know him as Rocky. And Rocky is a ex-electrician turned realtor, turned MLO, but the way that he's changing lives on his Facebook group is he has mastered helping not 1,000, not 2,000, 5,000 plus in growing people study and pass their NMLS. And today Rocky is going to talk about his journey, but also he's gonna give some tips and tricks about how you too can either A, study for and pass your NMLS, maybe you're a hiring manager and you have some, some future recruits that are studying right now for the NMLS and maybe they're struggling, you need to listen to Rocky, you need to check out Rocky's Facebook group and eventually you need to check out Rocky's website. And we're gonna talk all about that today on this episode. But without further ado, the man, the myth, the legend, Rocky, thank you for yeah. taking the time to be a guest on the Loan Officer Podcast. Thank you, man. I'm super stoked to be here, man. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And it's not difficult to ask someone from the Northeast to fly down to Florida in the month of February. It's not at all. Yeah. How has that weather changed for you? Um, well, it's crazy because when we left, it was actually like in the mid to high 50s. So oh, that's like almost bust out your, your bikini and go yeah. to the beach, right? But it's 30 three here dead today so yeah and i'm pretty sure there's an ice storm coming I your think way there's something going on right? yeah so i don't i don't know what type of um uh trip you have planned if you have to turn around and get back or you're gonna stay for the weekend but... nice all right you're gonna hit some of the theme parks and go to the beach or no. do you know yet um there's a bunch of people from the group that came here like some are flying in no way yeah yeah there's, a, there's gonna be a bunch of us here so we're gonna be hanging out for the week and just it's chill nice this is your new family it's my family man this, this is... is my real family like i have i've Thousands of new family members. It's amazing. So for those people who don't know, Rocky and I, are, are, the way that we were connected was pretty awesome. He hadn't heard of me. I hadn't heard of him. But the same people who had been following the Loan Officer Podcast, or now that we've launched our website, which is theloanofficerpodcast.com, or I prefer tloponline.com, which has a ton of content. It also hosts these episodes, but also has a lot more training content and various printouts that, that uh, mortgage professionals can access. Um, but you hadn't heard of me. I hadn't heard of you, but our followers were like telling you, Rocky, have you checked out T Lop? Or they were like DMing me on IG and they're like, Dio, you got to check out this guy, Rocky. So we were connected and yes, you have thousands of new family members because out of the kindness of your heart, you spend hours every night helping people study for their NMLS which I think is absolutely amazing. And these people worship you. I, I'm, I don't know how much you know this. Like, so this centerpiece, for example, let me talk about how people worship Rocky. Well, one, I saw they started a GoFundMe to make sure you got down here. That was pretty awesome. You didn't ask for that. You might not no. even had needed it, but people were There's willing. Little, you know, I, I super appreciate it. Um, you know, I just, sometimes I just try to absorb what's going on. Yeah, you know? I mean, there's, there's Ryan DeBelts from Fairway Independent Mortgage. Ryan reached out to me and said, Hey, Dio, I'm a fan. I watch you on, on YouTube. And I know that you like to interchange your centerpieces. Well, this is one of Rocky's favorite books. It's be obsessed or be average by Grant Cardone. And he's like, I want you to have it, meaning me as a gift, but I want you to feature it when Rocky's on your show. Cause it's, it's one of his favorite books. So shout out to Ryan at Fairway. Thanks, Thank Ryan. You. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Ryan. That was pretty awesome of you. Ryan's a good dude, man. A yeah, really good mu dude. much appreciated. And so he is one of those disciples. He is one of those people that found your Facebook group. Yeah, it's crazy. I know that because I know of three people that had reached out to. I know Joanne, I believe, was the first. And then Alexis and Chris had reached out. I don't know if there was more, but those are the ones that I know of because they had mentioned it to me after the fact, like, yeah, we had reached out, like Joanna reached out to you, I think a while ago, I think she was one of the first. So shout yep. out to all you guys for even 
getting us together. Correct. And at one point I connected with Lance. Um, Lance I, yeah. I don't know how, how I got connected with Lance, but I connected with Lance. Lance is what helped me get in contact with you. And yeah, kind of like the rest is history. And what I love about it is you're doing the piece that I don't do and I can't do. Like full disclosure, I've never gone through the 20 hour uh, safe course. I've never had to pass the, I don't even know how many questions and how many sections it is, but- it's 120 questions. The 120 question test, nor have I had to study for it, right? I, mean, I became a mortgage loan originator back in 2004 and sure there's various trainings I had to go through, but I'm, I'm kind of a little bit sheltered because I work for a bank owned independent mortgage banker and because we're bank owned and FDIC insured, then I'm not required to have all the things that you all are required. So you take care of that. And then what we try to do with our website and our, and our um, podcast is take it to the next level. It's like, okay, now you're licensed, now what? But we're not gonna make this episode about the now what? We're literally making the episode about where you are a subject matter expert. And um, for those that are like, will you just give us the freaking Facebook uh, group? Let's do that now, because after that, what I wanna do is talk about your journey. Right, like how did this Facebook group come about? What was your journey like becoming a registered mortgage loan originator? Um, and, and then we'll get into tips and tricks. So we're gonna tease people who are viewing and listening to us. If you're here for the tips and tricks and that's it, go ahead and just fast forward. Because <laughs> but for the next probably 10 or 15 minutes, we're gonna shout out what the Facebook group is. We're gonna shout out what the website is. Um, and then we're also gonna talk about Rocky's story. Once we're done with Rocky's story, then as much as you're willing to give us for free, I would love for you to give the audience your best practices that you've developed, not just for yourself, but now that thousands of other people have been able to follow your lead and they too pass their NMLS exam. So first and foremost, what is the name of the Facebook group? MLO Study Buddy, Let's Pass the Exam. So MLO Study Buddy, Let's Pass the Exam. And it's very important that you know it and it's that distinct and that specific because there are other Facebook groups out there. They may be good, they may be bad, they may be great. We don't know and we don't care because we know Rockies is great. So we know it's MLO. Study buddy. Study buddy. Let's pass the safe MLO exam. Let's pass the safe MLO exam. That's the one that you're looking for. And if I remember correctly, it's, there's a, um, like if you're looking for a color, I look for colors. It's a, like an, is it? I just changed it. Oh, you did, I okay. Just, I just updated it. Uh, it's like a bluish, purplish. Um, we added a new logo on there and okay. it has our website, the MLOStudyBuddy.com awesome. on the Facebook picture as well. So say that website again. MLOStudyBuddy.com. MLOStudyBuddy.com. I just visited your website. It's pretty badass. Yeah, they Like really whoever built it for you. It. Shout out to JR Martinez. JR Mar Martinez, is he up in Long Island with you? He is, yeah. Yeah, JR. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him since we were kids. He did a fantastic he job. Did. He did it quick, too. Yeah, and, and what's cool. awesome is what I noticed is your website's a lot like our website, right? TLOP online and MLL's studybuddy.com. Studybuddy they're at like 10% yeah. of where they could be. You know, it's a great starting point. And both of our web developers have done a fantastic job. Now it's on us to continue to, to optimize it and add content, which I know from talking to you offline, and you and I are gonna have a meeting later this afternoon where we're gonna talk about that. Like, hey, how do we do more? How do we synergize some more? So cool, that's where you find this study group. That's where you find Rocky, his contact information and how to gain access to his expertise, which again, is helping the future of the mortgage industry pass this freaking exam. Right, because the exam is your barrier of entry. It's your like admittance ticket. You're not allowed into our cool kid club without this ticket. You are helping people make sure they obtain that ticket. But let's talk about your story. So you were an electrician for 20 years. Yep. And then you made up your mind that, hey, not gonna do this any longer. Yeah, my body was starting to hurt. Okay. <laughs> Crawl through addicts and stuff. Um, so yeah, I had my own electrical contracting company. Um, and then, yeah, I was like, you know what? I need to find something that I could do to the day I die. Cause I can't do this to the day I die. So I went, decided to take my real estate test and I did that. And I was like, you know what? I'll do it part time and do electrical still. And, but then, you know, the market got good. So I went full time real estate. And then, um, my sister who works for Homebridge Financial and she's an A over there. She was like, Hey, you should get your MLO license to just do some loans on the side. So I did that. So I studied. I uh, took my 20 hours the week before the shutdown. Okay. In March. Um, and then 
So my last day of the 20 hours, the next day was the shutdown. So I didn't study from then until I could take the test again in October. And I took it and I failed. So I didn't, you know, I just took the 20 hours. I was like, yeah, I got this. You which, know? by the way, is that common for people to fail? Uh, yeah. So the percentage, the passing, the last time I looked, it was 56% pass your first time, 44% pass your second time. And then it was 51% the third time. So, so the odds numbers, really, yeah, yeah, the odds really are not in your much. favor. No. Yeah, they're not in your not favor. Not at all, not at all, especially not the second yeah. time. Yeah, so so you failed your first time. Failed my first time. So but you passed your second time. Passed my second time. Okay. Yeah, passed my second time. So when I got out, I remember getting out the first time I failed. I was like, you know what? No way, this ain't going to happen. I remember going home, taking it, putting it on my refrigerator, not feeling bad for myself, not nothing. Like, all right, I'm going to destroy this test. And I just went to obsession mode, man. I became upset. I was reading the book. Okay. I became obsessed. And I said, you know what? I'm going to beat this test. I'm not going to let this test be. I'm not giving them another friggin' $110 because every time you fail, you got to pay $110. Right? So I was like, I'm not doing it. And I remember going, just looking for, you know, going online and looking around. And I found Affinity. Um, and I started studying with it. I remember printing it out and going, like, there's no way I'm learning all this. It was just a lot of information. So the, the first time, did you just take the 20 hour course and then just go sign up for the exam thinking, Oh, I took the course. So I no, I did some practice tests because that's how I did the real estate exam. I okay, just, I took the seventy-five hour course for real estate, right? And then I did some practice tests. I went in and I, I passed the test my first time. So I was like, I'll do the same thing with this. No, much totally different. Di totally different test. Totally different. Yeah, test. my guess, and I don't know this, right? So I'm, I'm asking you: Is the twenty-hour course more of a just check the box that you did it? Yeah, that course should really be a 75 hour course like real estate is. I mean, because there's, there's just not enough information. They could even teach you in 20 hours to just go and pass this exam. Like after the 20 hour course, you still have to study for another month to some people. It's three, four months. It depends, you know, on the time they have to study. And so that's good to know. And that's something for people who are tuned in. If, if you were lightly listening, maybe stop what you're doing and listen intently. The 20 hour course, that's more of a checkbox. It's, exactly. it's three, six, nine, maybe even 12 weeks of studying if you want to give yourselves the most opportunity to pass the first time. Um, the 20 hour course alone isn't going to prepare you. You are going to have to study and for many study your butts off, become obsessed like the book on our table tells us to. Okay. So that, that's what you did. So, so you became obsessed. Did you use any particular tools? Like you mentioned Affinity, mm -hmm. and I didn't know this until you and I started becoming friends. Affinity is like one of four or five mm -hmm. national companies that offer A, the 20 hour course, as well as they have study materials that you can purchase, correct? Okay, I'm, I'm saying that yeah. correct. Yeah, you're, you're, you're nodding mm -hmm. in agreement. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm saying that because I really don't know. I just want to make sure. So Affinity was your drug of choice. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have Mac, you have OnCourse, uh, SafeMLO, um, CompuCram. Okay. Um, those are all, you know, and they all basically have the same material. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. It's just how they present it and how you study it. Really okay. At the end of the day, right? Okay, so after you failed the first time, you're like, okay, I have to do more. So that pushed you to go purchase Affinities. What what'd you like about Affinity versus the others? Or did you just, that's the one you I found? I no and, idea. Okay. Just, it's yeah, just the one just, I probably just, I went on, I looked at some comments that people were making on their Facebook page. I heard her on YouTube. That's how originally I heard her. Okay. Um, or Trisha. Um, and uh, yeah, then I got the, so they have the 800 facts. So, which I think they need to like put that out there a little more. So it's like kind of buried in their program. Okay, so what is that? The 800 facts? It's 844 facts that you should know to pass the animosis. So this is stuff they should have covered in the 20 hour course, but maybe they didn't do it in depth? It's just the 20 hour course just goes over the basic regulations. Okay. And this is broken down in depth. Like the 20 hour course, they don't talk about what a defeasance causes, you know, or anything like that, you know. So a Affinity really breaks down just the more deeper stuff. Okay, so the 184, the 844 feet. facts yeah. um, is what you purchased to study. Well, it was the whole mastery course. Okay. So it has the modules, it has a four hour video, it has a bunch of stuff in there. Um, and then it has some flashcards and then it has the 844 facts. Would you say the 844 facts is the holy grail? 
Yeah. Okay, so 844. It, it was. Okay. It was. It's, you know, Trisha passed away, which she was awesome. And I think a lot of what I'm doing is from listening to what she was doing. I think okay. she inspired me a lot Yeah. Uh, to do what I do. Um, but, you know, they just haven't been updated as much. So we have a file in our Facebook group of updates that Affinity hasn't updated. So you can go and print out that file and see what the new penalties are. Oh, nice. For the, yeah, okay. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it's funny because uh, we're talking off camera, but for those that tune in on YouTube and you're on our YouTube channel, A, thank you. B, if you haven't, go there and subscribe. We're trying to get to 10K subscribers. Um, and then after 10, I'm going to be pushing for 30. So yeah, if you help us get to 10, thank you. But please know I'm still going to want you to share us so we can get to 30. Don't know why somehow 30 stuck in my, my head. But when I was studying for my CMB, I was telling you it's a six hour written exam. Um, after two years of studying and having to work in the industry for three plus or five plus years, I used flashcards. So flashcards were, were mine. What, when you're teaching others how to study and pastor this, you're basically teaching off of the 844 facts ish. Ish. I've added my own material on that that I, that I've gotten from just being like, all right, you know what? They need to know this. They need to know that. So I've added stuff in there. But yeah, a lot of it is, I mean, some of it's prep Excel from on course, like just little things and not so much the way they ask it or their information. I put my own spin into things. Of course. You know, um, because again, they're all really have the same information. Well, correct. At the end of the day, a law is a law, a regulation is yeah. a regulation. It's yeah. kind of like if I were to teach you Fannie Mae selling guide, the selling guide is the selling guide. FHA is FHA. Now, how I may explain it, the analogies I may use, even my voice inflection or my energy may be the difference of why someone retains the knowledge or not. And I've I've uh, seen your videos. I've seen what you do. And obviously, it's the delivery and it's the way that things are explained or the way that you call someone out or you hold them accountable or you keep it real on the Facebook groups that you're doing. You're doing live videos every night. Right, like, what time do your do your and these are study sessions, by the way. What time do they start? Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I usually go to about 12. I've been going to about 12:30. Okay, you are a saint. You are Saint Rocky from here on out. You are a saint uh, of the mortgage gods. Okay, because um, that that is truly amazing. So your journey, which I'm kind of bouncing back and forth, so hope you don't mind. No, your journey was you failed, you got pissed, you became obsessed. You reached out to Infinity. You purchased their mastery course. You fell in love with 844 facts, even if 44 of the 844 needed to be updated. Um, and you started studying. Any particular way that you studied that worked for you? Yes. Um, so when I, the, when I got, had gotten Infinity and I printed out the 800 facts and material, and I remember looking at it just being completely overwhelmed, going, there's no way that I could learn all this information. and my girlfriend, fiance now. Congratulations. Thank that you. just Thank happened you. a week or two yeah, ago, right? Yep. Saw uh, that Valentine's on Facebook. Day, Valentine's oh, Day, yeah. awesome. Thank you. So, um, shout out to Nicole. 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 Love you, babe. Yep. Who's in the audience action yes, today? She, she and JC are sitting behind camera. Actually, Nicole's holding up her cell phone. I think she's Facebook Live in us for the group, she isn't is. she? Yes, yes. That's she is. so cool, Nicole. This is the first Facebook Live. Hey, everybody, I'll wave to it. Uh, this is the first Facebook Live that we've ever done. So, how cool is yeah, that? That is really cool. Yes. I'm glad to be a part of it. So, um, so, so, so she, Nicole, so, Nicole was helping you study. I think she's the reason why I pass. Okay. She's the reason why I do all this. She's dead. This, none of this could be possible without her. Very not, supportive. First of all, not supportive isn't even a word. Like beyond yeah. supportive, like not many women would let their men do four hours a night, every night. And plus I do one-on-ones with girls. And you know, like I do I do a lot of stuff other than that four hour class every day. I jump in other groups and help them. I do one-on-ones. People just call me just when they're down. Yeah. You know, just to build them up, you know. Um, but yeah, she came up with a study plan for me. Like, hey, listen, I'm just going to read this to you. And whatever you get wrong, I'm going to make a flashcard of it. And we're going to do that every night. So I would do my flashcards all day long, obsessed, like in the bathroom doing my flashcards. I, I didn't listen to no music. I just listened to anything I listened to. I had to do with the test. And every night she would ask me questions. And just every night it would go. And then it would be, the X's would become a check. A check, and then I started to put things together and understand things, and then I started helping other people at that same time too, because they were like, "Well, how are you learning? Like, how are you getting all this pretty quick?" You know. Plus, I joined MLO Study Buddy, okay, with Charlie. So it was me, Charlie, and then we had a couple of other people came in. It was like four or five of us for a while, and then um, 
I was like the second or third to pass, uh, to take the test, I think, in the group. And then I passed. And then um, I just started helping, doing one-on-one, just helping people. Hey, you know, I'll give you a hand, you know? Well, it gets interesting. It's like you never set, uh, sought out to be like, hey, I want to become Facebook famous within the mortgage industry. And I want to help thousands of, of professionals do what I just did. People, and that's what I commend. And I think it's why it works so well for you is you are your audience. It's like when John Coleman and I do episodes, just he and I, he's my audience, right? John Coleman, college educated millennial who who maybe doesn't really understand home buying and home selling and and you know how the financial markets work. It makes it easy for me to do a podcast because I'm just talking to my buddy John about things that I maybe know a lot about just based on 18 years experience. You know what it's like to fail the exam. You know what it's like to study your butt off to pass the exam. And you see what everyone in the quote unquote industry is doing. And you're taking what you like, but you're also taking what you don't like. And you're doing more of what you like. And then all the stuff you don't like, you're coming up with your own material to make sure that you can put together a comprehensive system so that people can take their 20 hour course, study one time, pass one time, and then more importantly, which is where I think our synergies really, really overlap and come together. It's like, okay, well you passed the exam, now what? Cause you're still a rookie. You're still wet behind the ears. You still don't know what you're doing. And you've even started a second Facebook group, which is called what? Life after the exam. Life after the exam. <laughs> yes. And like what I was excited about having you on board is like there's the synergies. It's like, cool. You can do everything that I can't do, which is help someone actually study and pass this exam. And then once they studied and passed the exam, oh, maybe you turn them on to the Loan Officer Podcast. 100%. Maybe they start going to tloponline.com. Maybe I have Rocky on and featured on tloponline.com. And maybe I can start coming on to your website that just got built. And I can start doing some features there because you know what, where you're a subject matter expert is where I'm weak. And where maybe I'm a subject matter expert, you're, you're still more of a novice. 100%. Now, you're not weak because you are a licensed mortgage loan originator. You're doing it. Right, you and I were talking about DTIs and you're closing a VA loan with a 56 DTI and a conventional loan with a 49 DTI. You couldn't have talked that way 20 months ago, Rocky. No, no 20 months ago, you were a noob, right? So like now you're, you're speaking it and how cool is it to have an instructor who's also in the game? Like my favorite professors at UCF were what they called adjunct professors. I wanted a professor, yes, they had doctor in front of their, their name because they had their, their doctorate in education but they also worked in the real world. So I think that also probably comes com, comes across. Definitely helps, but you know, it's it's tough because I have to be careful because what what we do every day in the real world and then I have to go and kind <laughs> of not lie, but you know, like, hey, this is for the test purposes. Yes. You know, it's this way, you, you know what I'm saying? Instead of like, you know, like again, the back end DTI for the test for a conventional is 36%. Yes, 36. Yeah, which we know that's yep. not true. By the way, when I was entering the mortgage industry in 2004, it was the same. So that was 18 years ago. And what I learned at a, in, in a classroom for up in Atlanta. So I was, I was working in West Palm Beach, Florida. They sent me to Atlanta for seven weeks of training. And what they do is they do, they break it up three, three weeks. You go back for a week and then you go up for three weeks. Well, when you came back to the field, you were doing ride alongs with actual real loan officers. And they were like basically telling me, yeah, all that crap they're, they're teaching you for the test. That's ah, not real world. Um, but you have to learn it. And it's good to know because when I lived through, and this is why for, for your students, this is why it's important to learn it from the book, even though the book may be different than the real world, is that when the proverbial shit hit the fan in 2008 and we had to live through that, it was my knowledge of the book that helped me survive a year like 2008 and 2009 because there were a lot of loan originators and mortgage professionals who didn't have my same um, experience of training and when all that crap hit the fan they were lost and for me it was like well if you hand me a calculator a red pen a credit report and a yellow pad of paper i can still do my job because i'll just go back to how the book taught me and i'll calculate dti that way i'll i'll uh, structure 95% conventional loans or three and a half percent down FHA loans. And I'll just do it based off of the manual because I knew worst case, I could still do a loan 
even if I couldn't figure out what the computers were going to take. So um, just a real world story, why it's important. I think we learned the book, but it's also difficult for you now as a practitioner to be like, okay, hold on. This is what the book says. And you're trying to pass the exam. I stick with the plan. Yes. You stick, stick with, with the, plan. the plan. I don't go off the plan. I try to stick with the plan. I st try to not have people Google because Google takes you down rabbit holes and then you're learning stuff you don't even need to know. Like, so people studying for this don't Google. It's a bad idea. That is a great tip. If yeah. you're studying for the NMLS exam, don't Google. Now, let me um, be the counter to that. Once you've passed the exam. Google. Google. <laughs> Once you've passed the exam, you don't understand how many times that a loan officer comes into my office on a daily basis and they ask me a question. I'm like, I don't know. What does your Google machine say? Right. Or like for us, it's like, then go to the company intranet site. What does that say? Um, but yeah, but that's, that's great advice. Yeah. Early on Google, Google will, it'll, it'll rabbit holes. It'll be too much. It'll yeah, it brings you to the CFPB website. And then there's a thousand things on there. Things that, again, that you don't need to know for the test. So why there's enough information you need to know for this test, right? Yep. Why add more well, onto and, it? And then on my end, I will tell people you pass the test. So what? So you need to be like, yeah, don't learn the mortgage industry until you pass the test. And then once you pass the test, it's like, okay, you're still a nobody. You still know nothing. You still have no experience. 100%. Now let's go out and start getting some actual practice, some at bats and some reps. And if you can grind it out and still stay obsessed, then in two years, at that point, you may be in a position that you are a mortgage professional. Like I always joke with people and this is great for your your, I call them fans, the, the fans of my Rocky to know your disciples. disciples. <laughs> yeah. Disciples of St. Rocky. This, the, this is what y'all should know is that if you're trying to become a mortgage loan originator, in my opinion, until you go out and close 20 loans, you don't even deserve a name badge. I tell this to the rookies because we hire two or three rookies every year out of my branch here in Winter Park, Florida. And I'll tell them straight up, like until you go out and close 20, you, you don't deserve the name badge. Until you close 50, you don't know what you're doing. Until you close 100 loans, you're not good. And until you close 200 loans, you're not an expert. So it's almost a race to 20 so I can actually wear my name badge with, with pride. So race to 50 closing so that I can at least be like, I know what I'm doing. So race to 100 so I can say I'm good. And then a race to 200 closings before I can say I'm an expert. For some people, it may take them seven years to get to 200. If you're Mike Williams, who works for us here in Winter Park that we did an episode with, I think Mike got to 200 in two years, you know? So two years into it, he can say he's an expert because he's seen that many prequels, that many pre-approvals, that many suspended loan files. Um, he's had many things go sideways that he had to correct, so on and so forth. You see where I'm going with that. Let me ask you this before we get into tips and tricks, because you already threw one out, which is stay away from Google um, until you're licensed. You're a realtor and you're a lender. Putting you on the spot a little bit, which one do you like better and why? Um, I like real estate. I like helping people find homes. Okay. Um, I like showing homes. I like helping people, you know, um, I know in loans, we do also help people, you know, I mean, my, so I have two models. One for the test is we change lives one test at a time. And my thing with the uh, real estate is, you know, we're changing lives one home at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think I like showing, you know, I like, I think that with the real estate, I know showing houses on weekends is like crazy because I'm working seven days a week pretty much, right? Um, with the MLOs, it's a little less running around as it is with the real estate, but I, I love doing both, man. I really do. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, which way I'm going to go. Yeah. All my MLO buddies tell me I'm not going to want to do real estate so I'm not going to want to run around showing people homes, but I still love it. I still have a passion for it. So No, I love it. Like, yeah, r r run run both in parallel. And then just see what the future holds. I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up, you have a career in focusing on just helping people study and pass this exam. I mean, I'm starting if, to, uh, if that's something that you're passionate about, I mean, you, it's a, it's, it's a talent, right? Because the information is the information and you know, the, the, the practice questions, they're the same, regardless of which one of those five companies you shouted out earlier. Whichever company you go to, the practice questions are the practice questions. 120 question exam is 120 exam. But the way that you help someone prepare, the way that you connect with them, the way that you hold their hand when it needs to be held, or you hug them when it needs to be held, or you kick them in the rear end when they need to be kicked in the rear end, like that's what makes it special. 
and there's value in there. There's, I mean, people should be willing to pay money right now. I'm going to tell y'all straight up. Hi, Facebook live again. He's giving you all hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of material for free. And I know you all appreciate them because I've, I've seen the videos you've made and the books you've sent and the GoFundMe you started. But at some point, the entrepreneur in you and the business person in you has to say, okay, I'm willing to give some of me for free, but there's some of me that it's worth my time and my time is worth X. I mean, your time with Nicole is worth what? Priceless, right? Your time with Nicole and Nicole's son, like what's that? It's, it's priceless. So I'm going to tell you you're worth 500 bucks an hour, right? Cause at 500 bucks an hour, you're making about a million dollars a year. Okay, cool. Rocky, you're a future millionaire. You're worth 500 bucks an hour. And now we have to figure that out. Right? So I love what you're doing. I love that you're passionate about it, but I'd encourage you, which you, here I go again. My wife always tells me you give unsolicited advice all the time. <laughs> um, and it's probably where I come from, where you come from. I like to help people, right? I, I really do. But, um, yeah, like I think you have a passion there and could you do all three? You could, right? Could you have a real estate brokerage where maybe you had a full-time associate that you did lead gen for them and then you fed them the leads? You know, could you still have your NMLO license and have a, like a junior LO that maybe you helped and sponsored them to get their license? Yeah, I've been, sure. I've been working on you, that. You know, there's, well. there's definitely some things that you could do yeah. to where you do all three. I mean, I look at my life and I'm like, yes, I run a mortgage company that I help run a mortgage company. That is what I do. But yes, I also have a podcast and that podcast also had us launch a website. And then on that website, we're going to be opened up to opportunities to do coach loan officers or branch managers. We have an opportunity to do speaking engagements. We have an opportunity to have paid content. Like, like you, we give all this stuff away for free. There's no ads on our YouTube channel. We're not out there, you know, trying to make money on YouTube or Spotify. What, what we're trying to do is help. And then those that want maybe a little bit more of us than to gain access to a little bit more of us or to tap into the 18 years experience or the thousands of loans that, that we've closed. It's like, Hey, cool. We want a small donation, maybe 25 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month. So we can continue to get better though, right? The 25 bucks a month, if enough people pay it, then it allows us to go out and hire and, and obtain the resources we need. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you, you eventually are going to have to follow that same path because there's only so much a Rocky you can get for free before, but you should, you should still do some free. Uh, no, I'm going to yes. like, yeah, I don't know which way. I don't know. Yeah. You know, again, this is all just, yeah, it's, well, you, it's, you it's, it's see, unreal to me. I didn't yeah. see any of this coming. Like sometimes I don't even realize what's going on. People have to remind, like, do you realize what's going on? I'm like, yeah, I just come here and help you guys every night. Like, yeah. you well, know, and, like, and, and honestly, kudos to Nicole. I mean, iron sharpens iron, right? We know that we know iron sharpens iron. And, and I understand that she was the catalyst and, and the, the rock behind you just passing. But the fact that she sits back and is OK with you, not hanging out with her at night because you're helping. What? How many people were on your last um, uh, study session? Uh, 184, I think. 184 future mortgage professionals were logged in. And well, you were, and you there's were probably about 20 or 30 that have passed already because 20 or 30 people who passed just come to hang out every night. The fam. And encourage everybody who's That's awesome. coming up. It's amazing. That man. is awesome. It okay, is. so amazing. so you have the fam is, is coming in. It's family night. And then you have the newbies coming in. But you're, you're doing all of this in the kindness of your heart. So, yeah, I got off on a tangent a little bit, and I apologize. But when I look at you and I get to know you and the more I talk to you, I'm like, yeah, that's your talent. That's your jam. If you love this. You should find a way to be able to make a career. It's my life, man. Yeah. I dedicate my life and, to this group. There's yeah. no doubt. And I agree with you 100%. And here's what's crazy. You haven't had the group for that long. How long have you had it for? 15 months. I think. 15 months. And it wasn't your group. You mentioned mm -hmm. Charlie before, Charlie. right? Mm -hmm. So Charlie started this group. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she started it for what reason? Because she was in your to same pass boat? To pass the test, yeah. To pass the She test. had failed twice. Okay. I had failed once. She just put on affinity. Like, hey, I am starting a study group. And I was like, oh, you know what? So she I, put I it, failed. Let me try something different. Right? Okay. So she puts it on Affinity's Facebook group. Uh -huh. And so you were on Facebook, on that Facebook group. She was on that Facebook group. And it was like, hey, let's just put together a, a study group. And it's private, by the way, which again, kudos for keeping it private. And you do a great job of of policing it, right? Yeah, we have a lot, sure. of, a lot of moderators. I mean, we have a lot, you know, it's even since, which I don't know if you get into that, I don't want to jump ahead or not, but no. the other like classes that we have and the other moderators and like, well, we have a lot. Going. So it's, it's cool. A, it's well, a, let's, it's, let's, let's get into that. I was just going to tie up on the story side 
you and Charlie get together 18, 16 months ago, whatever it was, it was just two or three of you, Mm -hmm. right? It was just two or three Mm -hmm. of you. And then somehow was it all word of mouth. Like how did it grow to five, almost 6,000? Do you even know? No. No. I mean, you know, like now I change it to where people have to put in, like, you know, how'd you find the group? How'd you hear about the group? Mm-hmm. So now it's like, you know, obviously, you know, it's a podcast, TikTok, Affinity. Um, I had someone yesterday join a group, Rocket Mortgage. I heard about you from Rocket Mortgage. There you go. Um, I mean, it's it's crazy, man. Yeah. So, hey, Rocket I don't Mortgage. Know how, I don't know. People would have How it originally started was. I was just doing one-on-ones with people. Mm-hmm. That's all I did. I'll do a one-on-one with you. I did it for like an hour or two in, a night with them, just one-on-ones. And I had like 30, 40 people in a row pass. Oh, wow. And then as they were passing, they were going on these other groups and saying, hey, I just passed. Thank you, Rocky, you know, for helping me pass. He, you know, and then people just started slowly joining the group. And then, I don't, it, then, I don't know, now it's 5,600 people. So once you passed, then you started pro bono tutoring, mentoring, um, one-on-one with others. And then from there, it's just, and that's crazy organic growth. Like top fortune 100 companies would pay. They would, and I don't know this, um, I only know this because John Coleman tells me this all the time, um, but they would pay for that type of exposure, that type of organic, like real exposure. That's how we know you're onto something. So let's talk about the Facebook group. Let's talk about, so what are the, you mentioned courses, other instructors, other moderators. If if I join your Facebook group and you let me in, what is it that I can expect to see? What's my experience going to be like? Well, first of all, I think you're going to realize the family and the camaraderie. The yep. So, you know, I mean, it's amazing. It really is amazing. Um, but, you know, you have my classes. First of all, we have the file section where you can go and we have a foreclosure process. It's just like a bunch of different files that we've come up with, diagrams that we've made. So study material. Study material. I can go in your Facebook group and obtain study material. You can get, yeah. yeah okay. you can get, it's not like we don't have like a big booklet, study booklet, you know, but we've come up with things in the past 15 months that help people. Acronyms, like the biggest thing, which is gold, which everybody should have, is Jen's cheat sheet. Jen's cheat yeah, sheet. What's Jen's name? Jen. Her Jen. full name. Uh oh. Jen Eckberg. Jen, Jen Eckberg. Eckberg. Shout out to Jen Eckberg. That's Jen's cheat sheet. Yeah, she created the cheat sheet. It's just acronyms. Hey Jen, and- I want to buy that cheat sheet. I want to put it on tloponline.com. Just, just you know, throwing it out there. John tells me if I put it in the universe, it'll happen. So hit me up, Jen. Yeah. And I- LinkedIn. Dustin Owen. Okay. And I just have to say something too because she's gonna hate me for not saying her last name. Yeah. And I apologize, but I'm really nervous. I'm, in, I'm in the hot seat, guys. Just yeah. know what it's like. Yeah. I'm sweating. Yeah. All right. Uh, how about this, Rocky? I still can't pronounce your last name. I studied it for like th- 30 minutes before we launched this episode over a half hour ago. And I still, um, if I butchered it, it'd be Lagercio. L- L- Lagercio. There we go. Yeah. So it's okay, Jen. It's okay. <laughs> guys like Rocky and I, we don't do last names anyhow. <laughs> At all, especially when you can't, we can't, can't pronounce them. Okay. So I'm back on the, on the Facebook. So there's, there's things like Jen's cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. There's various like best practices. Like this is just a community Mm -hmm. sharing Mm -hmm. what they've put together. That's working or has worked for them. Or maybe it's like been passed along like an heirloom. Hey, my friends, uncles, aunt use this. I'm using it. You guys should also know about it. Yes. The past 15 months of people that have come through this group that have passed, that have left a little knowledge behind that we've put into where they belong, you know? And, you know, what happens is too, is a lot of people, they see what's going on here and they want to help. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's yeah. amazing. And, you know, so some people don't, in that period of waiting to get their license from when they pass the test, which, you know, sometimes it's a month. In New York, it's like seven months you have to wait. Well, you have to wait seven months. In New York to get license. So it's about I, six to eight months. So I take my 20 hour course. I study my butt off for nine weeks. I can't take the the test or I can take the test. test. I can pass it. Pass the test. And then I have to wait. You have to wait. Yeah. New York's about six to eight months. Is that because they're all down in Boca Raton for the winter and and no one's working or what's the deal? It's New York, man. Don't get me don't get me started. Okay. (laughs) All right. Fair enough. Why aren't you licensed in New York? Like me individually? Yeah. Well, well, oh, oh, well, why is Waterstone yeah. Mortgage not licensed? Yeah, in, in I heard New an York? episode. You were like, I don't even want to get into There's that. There's two states that we're not licensed. One is uh, New York. One is Hawaii. The reason why we're not licensed in Hawaii is really it's real simple. Hawaii requires brick and mortar, which I've already raised my hand, and I'm like, dude, I'll move to Maui. 
Um, but my daughter's like, hey, we, you can't move to Maui until I graduate high school and she's only in eighth grade. So I had to put that on the back burner. New York is a state that you're either all in or you're all out. And by all in, like you need to be closing hundreds, if not thousands of loans on a monthly basis because of the compliance and the compliance regulation crazy, yeah. and the and the legal, like the risk you take on um, and the amount of audits you have to go through. Yeah, it's one of those either all in or all out. So it makes sense now that it's going to take seven or nine months. Yeah, they really look, they really rip you apart. Like you got to be squeaky clean. Yeah, so like if, if I'm trying to to start doing loans right away, I may need to look at states like Florida or Colorado and try to do loans outside of my home state yeah, while you're waiting I think on- think Florida is two to three months too, right? I wouldn't know, isn't that sad? Yeah, two to three months. Yeah, I've, I've been sheltered living in this little umbrella called Waterstone Mortgage where I have a distinct advantage, which is not fair. Um, if it, like as, a, as an advocate on the mortgage industry, I would say it's not fair that banks or bank owned mortgage companies that their mortgage loan originators do not have to go through the same rigmarole that you all do. Like that is not fair, but it's the world that we live in and we definitely take full advantage of it. It's both a recruiting competitive advantage um, and it's also a, a, a timing you know, advantage. It's, it's easier for me to take someone who maybe was highly successful selling Porsches for the past five years or highly successful as a medical sales rep and bring them into the mortgage industry knowing that I can interview you today, do your background check, do your do your fingerprints, um, process an employment application. In two weeks, you're starting. You know, by in two weeks and one day, I have you in Zenix Ground School, and I have you coming to mortgage school every single Wednesday. You're coming to my scripting class every every other Monday, and we're going to teach you this this business, teach you how to sell and market yourself. Because that's that's kind of the next step for for your fans, for your disciples. It's like okay, once you pass the test, you now have to learn. Well, how do I market myself and how do I structure a loan and how do I run payments and how do I actually, I know what an LE is, but like, really, I don't. So how do I read an LE? How do I explain an LE? Um, it's that practical and that's the two year grind. And so you're saying it could be a three year process. You take your class, you study, you pass, you now wait nine months if you're in New York and then you get hired on and it's another two years before you really know what you're doing, which is a cool mindset for anyone who's tuned in to understand you tackle this the way you would tackle going to college. You tackle this the way that you would tackle going to some kind of a, like my cousin went to a, um, a, a trade school. Like he's a badass boat mechanic. That was a 20 month intensive program for him to go through. And he still goes back every two years and, and it obtains a new certificate or a new license. Or if you already have your four year degree, you would tackle this the way you would your MBA. Like that's how you tackle this mortgage career. And it's a career. It's a profession. It is, we were talking about this earlier, it's not Wall Street, but it's also not Bourbon Street. You know, like we are white collar, but we are white collar for our blue collar clients. And I think if you have to understand that to also understand how you tackle your career, when you look in the mirror, do you see Bourbon Street or do you see Wall Street? And I'm gonna tell you, you should see more of Wall Street. It's okay to do Bourbon Street, that's for Friday night and Saturday. But Monday through Friday, we need to be more Wall Street. Um, and that's food for thought and a quick rabbit hole and probably me getting on my soapbox. Back on your Facebook page, what are some of the instructors doing? Because you're not the only instructor, right? No. So what are these instructors doing? What are they teaching? And what makes your, I'm going to call it a system, what makes your system so unique and why are you having these results that you're having? All right. So, so yeah, so you got my classes five nights a week from 8 to 12. Then you have Jack does a arms class, adjustable rate mortgage class, where he has a simple way of figuring arms out. It's crazy what he does, but it helps a lot of people. So I, I want to watch that. We once did an episode just on arms. So there is a TLOP episode. I don't know what episode number it is, but I have found if you go on YouTube, the YouTube page has a really cool search bar. You could type in ARM, preferably all capitalized, capital A, capital R, capital M. That's one of those acronyms you have to know. We just dropped an episode like yesterday on acronyms. Um, I'm curious to see how the way we explain acronyms maybe bodes to the way that you teach it for the test, but there's an episode on mortgage acronyms. Um, but so Jack is teaching ARMS. Mm -hmm. You're teaching your class Monday through Friday. Uh, Sunday through Thursday in my class. Sunday through Thursday. Yeah. What happens if the Jets are playing? Oh, the Jets would never be on Sunday Night Football. They're not good enough. Never mind. Um, boom, boom, uh, Rocky's a Jets and Mets fan. 
Um, the good thing about the Jets is they were good. You remember like Curtis Martin, Chad Pennington, I, any of that? I mean, yeah, I, yeah I, a little bit. Was, yeah, of course <laughs> I remember. I, suppose, I mean, um, okay, but no, it's Sunday night through through Thursday, Thursday night. night yeah. And I think it started with just like you're doing an hour a night, and now it's like four hours a night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just started with, for free. You know, when I was doing one on one, so many people were on one on ones, I couldn't do it anymore. So I said, all right, I'll just start a group. I'm going to just start doing a group, you know, and then that just, you know, became to 100 and something people. And how often is Jack teaching arms? So I would say that, you know, Jack probably does two classes a month. Okay. Two classes a month. And are any of these recorded or no, just live? Oh, I, I love it. Anything. I we love it. Yep. Anything. Uh, Lance does recorded. He has YouTube videos that he does. Yeah. It's basically like kind of based off of my class. Yeah. Well, Lance was a student, right? Yes. Lance was a student. They were all, every, every moderator in my group passed okay. through my, through my class. Yeah. That's yeah. One so, of the rules. yeah. So, so Lance, um, is how we, we connected, I mm -hmm. think uh, one of the ways, one mm -hmm. of the ways that we connected. And yeah, so he has taken your material, his inspiration from being a part of your yeah, class. Yeah, he uses Jen's cheat sheet and yeah, he, um, it's it's a good video um, to just get the basics, you know. Yep. Okay, very good. And, and does Lance instruct at all, or mm -hmm. okay? Nope. So um, Jen instruct. Jen does. Jen does math. Okay. And you know LTVs and DTIs what? and front and back end ratios and how to figure them out all that stuff. Um, and she does a cheat sheet class. How to read her cheat sheet. How to understand her cheat sheet. What her cheat sheet's about, which is awesome too. Is her cheat sheet solely to pass the test? Yeah. Uh, no. So, well, uh, like, that's how it was designed. Okay. But, you know, we, we joke about it all the time because we had someone that had gone to work somewhere. I forget what company it was. And they walked in her cheat sheet was on one of the broke his mm -hmm. walls. Well, like, I, I'll give you a tour of our facility because you're here at 2699 Lee Road in Winter Park, Florida. And we have 15,000 square feet that's manned by 60 mortgage professionals, men, women, of all ages and all types, loan officers, loan officer assistants, processors, underwriters, like the whole kit and caboodle is here. And if you walk around, you'll see everyone has a cheat sheet. Like like whether it's using it to pass the exam or whether it's using it just to remember. Yeah, just the basics. Yeah, just yeah. rules of thumb. Like, hey, it's a $300,000 purchase. What are my closing costs gonna be? You know, oh, it's gonna be, a there's, a there's a cheat sheet for that. Like obviously you're going to do an itemization fee worksheet. It's gonna bleed into an LE. But in the interim, if you need to spit something out, It'd be nice to know that, oh, it's about two and a half percent. Well, then what's two and a half percent of 300,000? You're like, oh, okay, well, it's going to be roughly $7,500, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, cool. So her cheat sheet was designed originally to pass the exam, but now it's something that mortgage professionals who have real jobs and careers now still have at their at their workstation. Yeah, it's cool, man. People print it out to like 30 by 50. They laminate it like it's a big thing. Um, and it's just got stuff from that i've gotten from when we started the group that people jen's added stuff and just if someone comes up with something good acronym for something like the you know eight items to make a bill to repay we have mice does wait say that again the eight items that the lender must use to determine if the borrower meets the ability to repay okay and we use mice does monthly mortgage payment income assets credit employment debt to income ratios other debts other monthly mortgage expenses like taxes and insurance and simultaneous mortgages. So we have stuff okay, like that. But so to th help. That's your own acronym. And, and it spells out what again? MICE does. So we say MICE, 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 does, MICE, have the, MICE does have the ability to repay. MICE, M-I-C-E-D-O-E-S. Mm -hmm. Run me through that again, because this is going to make a fantastic clip on IG. I'm just going to tell it right now, JC. Um, MICE does, and the M stands for? Monthly mortgage. I mortgage payment. Okay. I I is income and assets. C credit. E is employment. D debt to income. O other debts. E like alimony and child support. Okay. E is other monthly mortgage expenses like taxes and insurance. And the S is simultaneous mortgages. Wow, you're dropping knowledge on me. Like we use things like pale property assets, income liabilities, because that's how I pre that's how I prequal somebody. If I'm sitting at a bar and I'm three drinks into the night. And someone's asking about mortgages, I can grab out a bar napkin and I can write the acronym P-A-I-L, Property Assets Income Liabilities. If you're studying for your NMLS exam and you're having to come up with ATR, which is ability to repay, you need to understand MICE does. And if you can understand what MICE does stands for, it's gonna help you answer that question correctly. Here's what's real cool, my reticular activators turned on. Ability to repay is two days, LinkedIn post on the Loan Officer Podcast LinkedIn page. Yeah? Yeah. 
So we, we always try to take clips from the show and and put them on LinkedIn, both my personal as well as the the business uh, page. And just, yeah, you mentioned ATR and it happens to be what is actually up today as today's post. Okay, so there's a tip and trick right there. Mm-hmm. I like that. Who else is instructing? Because we, so we, we talked got, about Jack, we talked yep. about Jen, we talked about you, and you're you're five nights a week, Sunday through Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I have the most classes. Like uh, Celeste does one every Saturday night. Okay. Uh, where you could just basically go in and ask her questions. Okay, so hers is like, like when I teach mortgage school, so I teach mortgage school every single Wednesday here um, in, in my office building to really anyone who wants to come, but primarily it's people who are two years or less in the industry. And it's no holds bar. I don't have an agenda. It's what do you want to talk about? And we'll talk about what's going on with appraisals. We'll talk about what's going on with interest rates. We'll talk about this client asked me X and I didn't know how to answer it properly. This realtor gave me this rebuttal and I didn't know how to answer it properly or respond properly. So Celeste is Celeste, doing that yeah. on Saturday. Celeste does that on for, Saturday night. For studying and passing the exam. Yeah, she does it for a couple of hours. I think she starts at 8 Eastern and I think she goes to like 10, 11. Depends on how many questions people have. But yeah, you know. With or without my IPA. Because I may, my, it's Saturday night. I may have to have a cold beer next to me. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, cool. Or, Definitely. you know, a nice bottle of vino. Yeah. All right. I that's, recommend it. You recommend it. <laughs> I but, recommend it. But what you're doing is it's more of you're quizzing people. I grill people. You grill people. Grill you put them people. in the hot seat. I put them in the hot like seat. Like you're in the it's hot seat today. Seat. I'm in the hot seat right now. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. And I'm grilling you. Yes. Exactly. All right. Um, yeah. I put people in the hot seat, man. You know, you don't have to. I mean, we have silent creepers. That we have a whole thing. Hashtag silent creepers. I don't know yeah. if you've seen that. Going <laughs> That's on. awesome. Um, but yeah, we have like a lot of silent creepers that do pass. Um, but the people who put their hand up, like 95% of them pass because not only am I working with them every night, I know I find their holes. I give them things to work on. I give them a study plan. And honestly, I just get them to believe in themselves, man, and have that confidence, you know. And I think with a lot of people, you know, it's just a matter of turning their cameras on and putting that hand up, you know. And I try telling people all the time, like, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Start turning your camera on, getting yourself out there. Because when you pass this test, you're going to have to go meet realtors. You're going to have to go meet people. you got to get yourself. You're going to be on meetings, Zooms. Yes. You can't be hiding behind your camera. Correct. You know, get yourself out there. And I think that it's weird because it's not like, I'm, yeah, okay, I, I teach every night for four hours and I'm grilling people. But I think it's just so much more than that. I think it's getting people to believe, to buy into the process, right? Mm-hmm. And to believe in themselves and seeing people like, you know, every day we have, I don't know, five to 30 people a day pass. Yes. You know and you have saying? people who fail and they still share it. Yeah. And they come back and they say, hey, I failed, but it's okay. I'm going to get back at it. Yeah. And normally I'll take those people. I'll tell them like, hey, listen, come to my class. Stop putting your hand up. within two. So how I do is when you're within two weeks of your test, you can put your hand up. So now I'll grill you for two weeks until your test. Now, let's say four days before your test, I don't think you're ready. I'm going to tell you straight out in front of everyone. Hey, listen, I don't think you're ready. I think you should push your test off another week or two. And then let's work on this, this, and this and get you ready to pass that test. I have like some weird sixth sense with that, that I could really figure out when somebody's ready or not for their test. And people need to hear that. They need to hear someone like you say, hey, you're not ready. Yeah, listen, I've had grown men cry. I've had women cry in there, like, you know, but it's real. That's what I think that makes it. It's just so real. And then when, you know, no one judges you. There's no judging. We have people from all walks of life in there, man. People from all over the country. You know, I had people, some girl came in, Amber Amber, her name is, and she was only in this country for six months. Wow. And she was from age, some country, you know, she barely spoke English. Um, and, you know, it's just crazy. So, like, we just, we build, we build each other up, you know. And I think that seeing the success really lets people know that, like, you know what, I get that person. Like, uh, two weeks ago, we had um, Tierney pass. She's from New York. Um, English was her sixth language. Sixth? Sixth language. Wow. Sixth language. Yeah. Yep. Six language. She she failed her first time, and you know, and she passed her second time. What um? So it's you, it's Jack, it's Celeste, it's Jen. Is that I, is that the core? That's yeah. Is, is that got, the faculty? We call them the faculty yeah, now. And, uh, yeah, and then we got Valerie this process of elimination. Okay. On how to just. That's more of like a test taking yeah, skill set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like kind of like my son is done having. We need him studying the SAT and the ACT, but we don't want him to study necessarily like you would one of your tests. It's like no study how to become a good test taker. Like pro- learning process of elimination. How do I eliminate two to get to of the four um, the choices so I can get it down to two, and then from there, hopefully, my my coursework and my hard work 
will pay off and I'll pick the right one. Right. That's and, and who teaches that again? Valerie. Valerie. Mm-hmm. So there's five. Five, yeah. And then, you know, there's a lot of people that do things behind the scene that nobody yes. knows about. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the list goes on. I, I can't even name them. Yeah. Seriously, the list goes on and on because people that just want to give back their time because they see what this group has given to them. So they want to pay it back. And, you know, so there's a lot. And we have a lot of side groups going on that they have their own names, Team Little Giants, Faithful Facts. Like, we've created all these teams it's probably 15, 20 teams outside that have their own little study groups, and then they all come to my class. Like, that's one of the rules. I can't have study groups during my class, yeah. and you, you know, try to get everyone Wait, to Wait, hold on. Class. What's one of the rules? You can't have a study group during my class. Okay, during your class. During my okay, class. Okay, but you don't want to get everyone to my group. class because that's really the success that this group yeah. has had for okay. the 15 months. You know, besides Jack's class, Celeste's mm-hmm. class, Jen's class, obviously. But that's been the secret sauce is – People coming to my class, putting their hands up and answering questions. This would be something cool. Put it out there in the universe. Getting the family together in three years, five years, seven years, doing like a cruise. Well, we did. Right? We did Vegas last year. Did you really? Yeah. We like, did you Ve- go? Did you go to a convention or did you all just go? No, to- we just booked told like you know the people who passed through the group. Just you know, and we're doing it this year too. We're thinking about doing Nashville this yeah. year. Yeah, I've been um, communicating with Stephen Marshall, who puts on uh, Mortgage Mastermind, and Stephen didn't do it the previous two years uh, because of COVID, but um, he's done them in in um, Atlantic City one year, but usually in Vegas, and he has big speakers come in. George Bush, or he had Tony Robbins, but nonetheless, it's in September, and I've been trying to uh, communicate with Stephen and see, you know, how maybe we could, you know, collaborate. Like, how could I get some of the tea loppers out to Vegas, and we could all convene as a community to one city, but also during a mortgage event, and and maybe you know Stephen would offer us some kind of a discount to come as a group. Um, but like, yeah, looking at what you're doing and talking about the people, the people behind the scenes and the contributors, it'd be really cool if you all can continue that, or maybe we can collaborate and give a discount to all of them. John and I are going to do a live event next year. So we're going to do TLOP live, which is going to be in Orlando. The first one, eventually I don't want to do just Orlando. I want to do Orlando. I want to do Arizona. I want to do Nashville because it's one of my favorite cities in all of America. Um, but where we do our own sales convention, maybe we limit to 100 or 150 people and we bring in top producers and we bring in speakers and we just talk about how to become great loan advisors and loan originators and eventually maybe branch managers and how do we build a team and uh, maybe bring in some financial experts to talk about, well, how do I also make all this money but save it and invest it and do it properly? So maybe when we do a TLOP Live, we can offer your group some kind of a group pricing bring them in too. And for those that have succeeded in their careers, it'll be an opportunity to A, get together, have some camaraderie, but also to learn, right? To attend some breakout sessions. Um, so stay tuned on, on yeah. for that and let you and I continue to talk about that. But you know, it's interesting because in three, five or seven years, I mean, the facts are the facts. Not everyone is gonna be in the industry in three, five, or seven years. I mean, I was in a class of 78 in 2004. We started in June of 2004. By January of 2006, so the market was still good. There was no collapse yet. That 78 had turned into 48. So we lost 30 within the first 12 months. And then from 2006 to 2008, oh, that 48 was cut down to 28. Now, 18 years later, that 78 is probably eight of us. There's probably eight of us that are still around 18 years later as mortgage loan originators or some version. Maybe we're branch managers now or regional managers or this guy or girl owns their own broker shop. But when we started in our training class I was talking about earlier, so you're going to have some of those students that, look, it's awesome that you passed your NMLS, but for whatever reason you got into it, things didn't go your way, you didn't you didn't like it, and that happens. I mean, one of my best friends from from high school we hired from law enforcement. The dude knocked it out of the park. He stuck out his two years. He made more money doing mortgages than he ever did um, in law enforcement. And he hated every red second of it, every minute of it. He hated being a mortgage loan originator. Didn't like dealing with realtors, didn't like dealing with borrowers. He went back to law enforcement. So just because he was good and just because he could pass the NMLS doesn't mean he liked it or fell in love with it or the term that we call is bitten by the bug. So. You know, I'm sure your students, you, you tell them that, right? You, you, you're you pretty upfront with yeah, them? Yeah, I'm very upfront with them. I tell the class all the time, probably 50, 
75 percent of the people may not be doing probably won't be doing mortgages in the future yeah and it's hard like it is hard you are starting your own business you are whether it's you starting your own um beauty salon whether it's you starting your own sports bar whether it's you starting your own um fashion accessory boutique that you sell out of the local mall or flea flea market like it's a 24 7 365 grind and you got to do it for the two years and you need to have some talent and you need to have some aptitude with a good attitude and yes not everyone's going to be able to do that just like not everyone who launches a restaurant will see that restaurant be successful or be able to open up a second or a third location or not everyone who decides that they want to be a club promoter actually makes a living being a club promoter right or maybe they do but after nine years like look this grind is beyond me. I need to find something else. Like some of the, um, actually I know a top, a top producing realtor in Jacksonville, Florida. He was a club promoter and he was like, look, that grind, that schedule, that lifestyle. So he's like, everyone. now he's like, I'm a family man. I can't do that anymore. I mean, he made great money, but real estate ended up being his calling because it, it translated well, just because you don't become a successful mortgage loan originator doesn't mean you can't become a successful loan officer assistant or a loan partner or a loan processor, right? It, or maybe you end up using that to parlay um, as a buyer's agent and you go into real estate, or maybe you go work for a title company and you become an outside sales rep or an account executive for title, right? Or maybe you leverage it to end up becoming a homeowner's insurance agent. Like we all have our own paths that we go down. And just because they started with you on your Facebook group and they didn't make it as a loan officer, doesn't mean that all your effort was for not and all their effort was for not. It was just, that was part of their journey and their story. And I do love the fact that you do tell people that, look, there's a good chance that you're not in the loan business next year or in three years. But for those that are, let's get together. Like, let's go ahead and kumbaya and have a good time and break some bread and drink some drinks. All right, before we end, let's spend five or 10 minutes. This is a super long episode, but it's not not often. We How get, long have we been going for? Oh, Jesus, we're at an hour already, oh, probably, really? I would guess. JC, do you know? We're at an hour already. Yep. How yeah, fast. it's fast. Yeah, when JC and I first started this podcast, which was only two years ago, and it's still a passion project, it's still a hobby. This is a hobby because we don't make any money. We actually spend money, but we love doing it, right? This podcast costs us money to do, but we love doing it. So you're the same boat I am, bro. Um, but when we started, I was like, every episode's 25 minutes. And if you listen early on to those first like 40 episodes, one, the audio was kind of trash because we didn't know what we were doing just yet. And we hadn't found our voice and our cadence. Um, so if you can get through them, I guess kudos to you and thank you because compared to these episodes we're doing now that we're in the 200s, they're way different. But I used to always shout out, yeah, in the next 25 minutes, we're going to talk about, <laughs> no, it's uh, however long we, we need to get through this episode. You flew down from New York on your own dime. You are too special to our well, industry. The, group, technically the, the group's group. dime. How about the that? Group's but you are too special to our industry and to the future, right? You are shaping the future of the mortgage industry. We like to think that we're doing the same exact thing. So if we're going to take an hour and 15, we're going to take an hour and 15. But let's do this. For those that made it this long or for those that fast forwarded to this part, this is what you wanted. Just spit to me. I'm a school teacher. I want a career change. I decide that I'm going to be a mortgage loan originator because I heard this dude, Dustin Owen, on episode 41 of the Loan Officer podcast that says, so you want to be a mortgage loan originator. What are you going to tell me about taking and passing the test. What are some tips and tricks that I need to know? Besides, look, I need to find your Facebook group. I need to go to your That's website. Obviously, That's Yeah, I mean, get registered first, yeah. right? Just sign up for the 20 hours. Okay, first step is you sign up for the 20 hours. I take the 20 hours. Mm -hmm. What's my next step? Definitely join my group, MLO Study Buddy. Join MLO Study yep. Buddy. Look for Rocky yep. or Rocco, the way his parents named him. It's Rocky in the Facebook. <laughs> it's Rocky in the Facebook. Perfect. Yep. And then, um, you know, figure out what study material you're going to use. I mean, you know, obviously most people contact me or other people inside the group and ask what's best for them. Because you're currently not offering study material. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Yep, not yet. not yet. But so currently you're going to have to find some study material. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you find the study material, like what are the tips and tricks? What are the... So I'll give you a couple like, of like, things. Let's say, dude, I can't make eight to 11. I just can't. I can't make eight to 11 for whatever reason, but I'm bound and determined. I am obsessed. Rocky, what do I need to do? 
So whatever material you're using, I recommend you taking doing making flashcards. Okay, make flashcards. Write your own flashcards of literally everything. Don't do these crazy flashcards where there's 20 things on a flashcard. Make it simple. Answer question, answer question. Put every – so whatever you're reading out of the book, just put it into a question and an answer. So you're qu- literally quizzing yourself off the flashcards. How many flashcards do you think I'd end up making? I think I had like 1,200. Okay. So somewhere okay. between 900 and 1,200 flashcards you're going to make. So then you have to break that down because that's daunting. So you may say, I'm going to make 50 flashcards a night. So if I'm able to make 50 flashcards better a night. Step, you better step your game up. Do more than 50 okay, flashcards but a so, night. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do. I'm gonna no, do matter f- if you want to pass this test or what? Yes. No, no, no. I'm going to create. Like if I'm looking at, at studying for this, I'm going to create 50 to 100 flashcards a night. If I do that seven nights a week, it's 350. So for four weeks, I just make flashcards. Every night for an hour, I make 50 flashcards so that for four weeks when I'm done, I have my 1,200, or at that case, it would be a little bit more, but roughly my 1,200 flashcards. Now I may spend the next two to three weeks actually studying them because I need to make them first, and then I'm going to study them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so flashcards would be your first tip and trick, and it's take what you're reading in your study material, and whatever you read, turn it into a question with an answer. Mm-hmm. You have the question on one side of the flashcard, the mm-hmm. answer on the other mm-hmm. side of the flashcard. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. what, now, what, what else? Now, just, I just wanna put this out there real quick. That probably works for 85, 90% of people just doing flashcards. Some people are either audible listeners. Mm-hmm. Or, you, know, yep. you have so many different types of learners uh, yep. and how they learn. Um, you know, so some some people could just read. It just doesn't work. Most people need them flashcards to constantly just be shoving it in their brain and be obsessed with it. But some people can just read the material. I know I couldn't do it. Most very people, few. Yeah. I would say very few can. And quite honestly, those people that can would never look for a study group because they've probably excelled yeah, in everything exactly. that anything they've done academically, they've excelled. So you have those select few that yes. can do that. But for the most part, most people that come to my group is because they failed the test and they need help. Okay. So this is, you know, that's the study plan that I give them is make the flashcards, right? So I usually tell people it's gonna take you about a week to make the flashcards. Okay. All right, um, because you're probably going to get like 500, 600, and then the rest you're going to make when you're coming to my class and you're getting stuff wrong. You're going to make, you're going to okay. write down what you're getting wrong, right? So, you know, every time I ask someone else a question, the other 100 and some people in my class are answering that question silently, right? So if they get it wrong, they're going to write that question down. What are you going to do with that? You're going to make a flashcard out of it. Right? Nice. Okay. And then are there certain sections that are easier or harder for most people? You gotta know it all. I mean, okay. I don't think there's anything that's. I mean, yeah, general mortgage people struggle with a lot. Okay. You know, because people start with Resper and then ECOA and Tiller and FHA and you know and all of that. You know, and then when they get to general mortgage, they're like, whoa. What like, What is taught in general mortgage? A general mortgage is like the hardest stuff that I think that people struggle with. The general mortgage is the terms of like a deficiency judgment. Oh yes. You know, exculpatory clause. Um, I don't even know what that is. I do know what a deficiency judgment is. I couldn't even the pronounce. The clause prevents the lender from using a deficiency judgment. Okay, look at that. And that would be what I found in my mortgage. Exactly. And a mortgage is a exactly. legal document that attaches a note to a property, which is always so funny because we're like, oh, we're in the mortgage industry. I'm like, ah, we're kind of in the qualifying for a home loan, giving you a note industry. The note you're promised to repay, the mortgage just says, if you don't pay us, we're going to take your home away from you. Yeah, and it gets tricky too because, you know, like, some states are lien theory, some states are title theory. So like when people start digging deep, I have to go like, whoa, because it depends on what state you're in, mm-hmm. right? On what really applies. Like, so I just try to pe- let people know like, hey, listen, trust deeds is something that's gonna be more like California or West Coast, you know, mortgages are more on the East Coast. You know, we're more of like a wet settlement and then they're more of a dry settlement state. You know, and I just try to keep it simple with that, you know, because then again, People start Google and stuff, and then they come to me and they're like, "Oh, Google says this." And I'm, I'm like, "Yeah," because it varies in different states. Yeah, you know. And then you have um, when you're looking at state specific, some states require a sponsor. Mm-hmm. Like I get questions. Yeah, Florida all, doesn't, right? No. Yeah, New York. Yeah, New York. Yeah, you have to have a sponsor. Yeah. So what does that mean? What? What? what I, I'm ignorant on this. Like, briefly walk me through. So I have to go find a mortgage company. That will like before I can take the test. I have, to no, have a sponsor. No, no, you can take the test. You could, you could take, you could even do your MU four if you want. 
Okay. After you pass the test, it's just you're not going to get approved until you have a sponsor. So I can pass the test, but not actually become approved until I find a sponsor. So basically, it would be take the class, study my butt off, pass the test, then go look for a sponsor. That's what I tell typically. people. Focus on passing the test. If they don't, don't put the car before the horse. Right? Yes, I love that. Right? Okay. Don't, right? Yeah, so focus on the test. Like That's another thing. Like you know, When people do talk about things about after the fact of my group, I try to say, hey, listen, that's for the other group. Or, you know, because don't worry about what you're going to make. you got to pass the test first. Oh, yeah, because there's been a lot of discussion about basis points and compensation and 1099 versus W-2 and – um, it's funny. I think I'm going to give you like 12 of our episodes that I think we cover a lot of these questions that you're going to now be telling people, Hey, look, go to the other group, go to the, after you pass the test group, they can also go to tloponline.com or they can tune into the 12 episodes. I'll, I'll give you that what mm -hmm. they are. Cause we're at like 205 or 206, ep uh, 206 episodes just in two years. And imagine two years from now, we'll be at over 400. Um, but that's, that's sage advice because people ask me, Hey, D.O., I need help finding a sponsor. And I'm like, I don't even know what states require a sponsor. We'll start there. And I love what you just shared with me. Let's not put the cart before the horse. First, pass the test. Yeah, because if you and don't then, pass the test, you're not going to be able to get a job anyway. Well, and as a hiring manager, if my state required a sponsorship, I, I'm not going to talk to you until I know you pass the test. Yeah, I mean, some people, they'll start off as an LOA. Okay. You know, start off as an LOA, just getting that experience while they're taking, while they're studying and while they're taking a test. I have a lot of... Okay. LOAs that come into the group that are just trying to, you know, pass the test. I have a and, lot of and people. And LOA is another acronym. It stands for loan officer assistant, right? So you're assisting another senior loan officer. You're probably doing a lot of paperwork. You're answering the phone. Maybe you're making outbound calls, some lead follow-up. Hopefully they'll let you take information or I, I still call it a 1003. I know it's an Erla, but you know, go ahead and take a 1003. Um, but yeah, that's, that is a great way to enter into this industry, especially for those people who are younger in life. Like if you're a lot younger in life, I'm talking 19, 20, 22, 23, and you don't have a lot of life experience, you know, sometimes you just need to be an LOA for a couple of years so you can gain life experience because it's hard to I give. I think it's good for a lot of people to be an LOA, to be honest with yeah. you, especially the younger ones. You know, I know it's harder for the older people to have to try to make that paycheck. Yes. Know? Which is hard anyway when you get out just knowing nothing, right? But yeah. um. Yeah, you know, I think that I also get people that like you that are registered that want to get their that want to get their license, and those are the ones I think that are the hardest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we know the so real stuck, world. Yeah, and stuck on what you've been doing for so long, and then I'm like, well, it's this. Like, no, it's not. I'm like, it is for the time. Well, it's funny <laughs> on on, yeah. on on our last episode where we did mortgage acronyms. I said MMI. I said monthly mortgage insurance. It's it's FHA. And actually, I was corrected, and, and 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 this lady was correct. I was wrong. It's actually mutual mortgage insurance. The M, I always remembered it as monthly mortgage insurance versus private mortgage insurance because there's nothing private about a government program. And that's how I teach it. And I'm sure it can be interchangeable, but when you Google it, Google's going to tell you mutual. Mutual is the right answer. I would have gotten that answer incorrect on my exam. But here I am, a, I would deem a fairly successful mortgage professional with 18 years experience and yeah, I could be one of your worst students. You could have been is you know so much more than me about this industry too, you know, but when it comes to the test. Yeah, you're the man. And that's that's why you're here because you're the man. Let's let's try to come up with a couple more tips or tricks for passing and studying. Like mortgage math, is that like how many questions are typically mortgage math? Is that I mean, you, do you spend a lot of time figuring out mortgage math? Or? I think mortgage. I, I think it's super important well, because that's three to. I mean, listen, that's probably what you're gonna use. Yes, when you pass, yeah. that's the most Mor important. Figuring Mor out LTVs mortgage and math DTIs. is the most important thing in the real world. Hundred percent. In the real world, if you can't count by eighths, I'm talking one eighth, quarter, three eighths, half, five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, one. And then you can't convert those eights into basis points, 12 and a half basis points, 25 basis points, 37 and a half basis points, 50 basis points, 62 and a half basis points, 75 basis points, 87 and a half basis points, 100 basis points, and continue to go. Yeah, you're a noob. You're wet behind the ears. You have to be able to talk. You have to be able to say, oh, that's an 80 LTV on a $300,000 purchase and say, oh, that's a $240,000 loan. 100%. My wife tried to tell me at dinner last night, oh, you're good at math. I said, bullshit. No, I'm not. I dominate fourth grade math. I'm really good at fourth grade math and as a mortgage professional. So I was happy to hear you say that because I have heard from other friends that, hey, really, they're only, they're only going to ask you like four or six questions about mortgage math. So 
don't stress too much about yeah, but you're that. You're giving them. Fr- I think the math is easy. Like once you learn it, I think it's fairly easy. So why are you not going to pay attention to it and take a chance of getting three questions wrong or four or five questions wrong? This test is hard enough. Don't give them. Yeah. Don't give them anything. Okay. Go in there a hundred percent prepared. Go in over prepared because most likely if you go in for this test under prepared or uh uh-uh, uh, you're gonna fail. Yeah. Sage advice. Sage advice. Gonna, so so we're. Fail. We're making flashcards, 900 to, to 1200. We're studying them. Preferably you have a Nicole like you did in your corner that can actually grab those and, and quiz you because it is easier to bounce. If you don't, that's why you have Rocky's that's Facebook what group. That's what, that's, my, that's what my class basically yeah, you is are too. Nicole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you are exactly. Nicole and then she yeah. puts up with you now. Yeah. Okay, and then she's agreed to put up with you for the rest of y'all's life. Yeah. All right. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. Any parting shots, any last minute sage advice to pass on to, to those that have made it an hour and 15 or 20 minutes into this episode? Yeah, I would say this. You know, I think the most, I think what a lot of people do is they come out of their 20 hours and then they buy practice tests. And they're okay. like, oh, I'm just going to go do practice tests. And they do them over and over and over again, and you're learning nothing. All you're doing is memorizing the question, memorizing the answer. You cannot do that. Learn the information first understand the information, then apply the information to the practice test. Learn it first. Don't waste the practice test by doing them over and over again. It's not gonna work. This test is very tricky. They not, It's not one plus one is two, this test. It's just some long, long ass questions with some long ass answers. And that's what this test is. They're trying to trick you. Don't let them beat you. Be over prepared for this test and be obsessed, right? Be obsessed. because. Be obsessed now because when you pass this test, you're going to have to be obsessed in this business if you want to be successful. You agree with that? I couldn't say it better. Rocky, the website again. MLOstudybuddy.com. MLOstudybuddy.com. The Facebook group is MLO Study Buddy. Let's pass the NMLS safe exam. He's Rocky. I'm Dio. You have tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast. Can you, I say one thing? Though, yeah, you sure can. Because I just want to give a shout out to my girl again. Yes. Real quick, because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even be here right now. And my group and everyone that really helps out in my group. I really appreciate you guys so much. And I just want to give a shout out to Gen X Realty and Coltrane Funding. Gen X Realty is my real estate broker that I work for. And Coltrane Funding is the mortgage company I work for. We didn't so. even get into that earlier. We should have. Shout out to Coltrane Funding. And shout out to Gen X Realty, Gen X Realty, Long Island, New York. Yeah, right. Is Coltrane just in Long Island, or do they Coltrane? Have... No, they're in Florida. We're in Florida, um, Florida, Jersey. We're gonna be licensed in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Philadelphia. Very cool. Well, shout out to both of them. Shout out to you, Rocky, again, Thank and you. to all of your members. Yeah, and I appreciate right? you too. Um, for, you know, yeah, no, you, you're 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 most welcome. But your members, your faculty, your students that keep coming back to to then pay it. I say you're paying it forward or paying it back. They're paying it both ways, forward and backwards. They're they're repaying what you gave them to others so that we can shape the future of our mortgage industry. If you want more content like this, like we have an entire YouTube library at the Loan Officer Podcast. We're on every social media except for Pinterest. So that means TikTok. That means Facebook. That means Instagram at the Loan Officer Podcast. And the website, like our new website is TLOPS. It's T L O P online.com. The reason why we're TLOP is our fans call us affectionately TLOP or they are TLOPers. We're also the loan officer podcast.com. If you're looking for more informational content, as well as some printouts, some lead trackers and some forms scripts, it's all there. Rocky Dio. It's all the time we have for you today. We will catch you on our next episode. Peace.